everybody. Welcome back. Email us, freedom at charliekirk.com. Joining us now is Mike Davis. Mike, welcome. Thank you. Um, so, Mike, uh, he, obviously, praise God that President Trump is okay. Also, he received some major news today on the documents case. Tell us all about it, Mike Davis. So, Judge Eileen Cannon correctly dismissed Jack Smith's case. <laughs> down, in, down in the Southern District of Florida because Jack Smith's appointment violates both the appointments clause of the constitution and the appropriations clause what we when you have an office created it has to be through legislation uh and what happened the office of independent counsel was the prior office that was created by legislation congress let that lapse after ken Starr's investigation of president clinton and the justice department just tried to do an end run they tried to create the office of special counsel by fiat so judge cannon did uh, her job as a judge and said this is unconstitutional. And so that, that case is no more. So uh, does this mean that also the uh, January 6th case could just be disassembled? Is that right? Well, it's uh, so the Judge Cannon's decision is binding on the Southern District of Florida. It's persuasive okay. in D.C. I don't think Judge Chuckin is going to side with Trump on that one. So this uh, will have to get resolved by the election when President Trump wins on November 5th and when he takes office on January 20th. His acting attorney general on day one needs to dismiss these Biden Democrat cases against Trump. This is obviously lawfare and election interference, and the house of cards is crumbling. And uh, the, 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 for quite some time, Donald Trump has had to endure this onslaught and this blitzkrieg of lawfare. Uh, does this does the presidential immunity case also potentially impact the Georgia case or the New York State case? Absolutely, both. Absolutely. So the, uh, with the presidential immunity decision. The Supreme Court held that the president of the United States, any president, is immune from criminal prosecution for his official acts, not his personal acts. And what we saw with that case in New York is they that that uh, Alvin Bragg, the Soros-funded DA, used evidence that was subject to presidential immunity. So there has to be a mistrial declared in that case. Remember, he's they, the, the jury, this Manhattan jury found him guilty. He has not been convicted or sentenced yet. Judge Mershon pushed back. The, the, that hearing until September, I think Judge Mershon knows he's going to have to declare a mistrial. And if he doesn't, the Supreme Court of the United States will step in again. How do we, when Donald Trump becomes president again, God willing, and it's hard to believe that there's not some sort of providential play going on here. How do we make sure that this weaponization of justice doesn't happen in 2028, 2029, a time where President Trump might not be president for the next President Trump, five, 10 years down the road? Because it's one thing to win and put the right people in place. How do we structurally make sure this never happens again? Well, I think the Supreme Court has largely done that. And so is Judge Cannon. And Ju uh, President Biden should be very happy with the Fisher decision on January 6th, the presidential immunity decision, and Judge Cannon's de decision. Because guess what? On November 5th, President Trump is going to beat Biden like a drum. Trump's going to be back in office. And does President Biden uh, want to go from uh, the being the hunter to the hunted? I, I think he should be very well, happy. And, and President Biden had an opportunity, which he missed, where he could have said, I would pardon Trump after he got shot. He missed a window where he could have said, I think this lawfare needs to be taken away. But he doesn't, he, the law, understand this was all, this was all steps of escalation against Trump. And they, the language created the environment where Donald Trump got shot this last weekend, the lawfare, all of it together. And President Trump is stronger than ever before. I don't say this lightly, but I blame President Biden for what just happened to President Trump because President Biden's entire campaign strategy has been to label Trump a dictator who must be stopped in prison for the rest of his life. They tried to throw him off the ballots. And now we have President Trump's opponents trying to assassinate him. Biden should be ashamed. He should bow out. His own party doesn't even want him. Uh, in closing, how do people support you, uh, your Article 3 project? And you have been so ahead of the curve on all this lawfare stuff. Mike Davis. I always say I may be crazy, but I usually am right. So it's Article 3 Project. You're early. That's right, early, right. It's Article3Project.org, Article number 3 projectorg You can follow us on social media, take action, and donate. Thank you, Charlie. Very good, Mike. You're always great on this program.